Hello friends, this is lesson number 55 in the series of British English Literature. Today, we are going to start our discussion on Christopher Marlowe. So this is going to be a very important lesson and we have the first literary giant of the Elizabethan age. He is the famous playwright, Christopher Marlowe. Number of works we have associated to his name. So we shall discuss all of his works like Jew of Malta, Tamburlaine, Dr. Foster's, Hero and Leander, Dido, Queen of Carthage. So number of works we shall discuss. But first, several facts related to his life. He is also called as Kit Marlowe. Kit Marlowe. And he was born in Canterbury to a shoemaker. His father was a shoemaker. Though about his date of birth we hardly know anything. And he was baptized on 26th February 1564. Now what is baptism or baptize? Actually when the child is born after a few days he is given his name and some of the religious ceremonies are performed. That is called baptize or baptism when he is given the Christian identity. And there is one more interesting rumor. It is not a fact but some people say or some critics say that Marlowe was Shakespeare and Shakespeare was Marlowe. What is this? Actually, there is one story that says that when Marlowe was given death punishment, he faked his death and later he took the identity as William Shakespeare and started continuing the writing work with the name Shakespeare. On the other hand, we have a different story like Shakespeare. Earlier, he assumed the name as Marlowe and later he started writing with his own name. Okay. For the moment, we can say that it is not established as a truth. So still we see Marlowe and Shakespeare both as a different persons in the history. One interesting thing we can notice is that uh, as long as we see Christopher Marlowe active as writer, we see nothing from William Shakespeare. But when we see the death of Christopher Marlowe, after that we see the writings of William Shakespeare. Though both are contemporary, William Shakespeare was also born in the year 1564 or so. So that's where some sort of a confusion starts taking space in the mind. And to counter this confusion, one fact we have that Christopher Marlowe was graduate and postgraduate from the university. He is among the university wits. But Shakespeare, he was never admitted in any formal college or university. Anyway, what is the term university wit? Actually, there were the writers, the playwrights in the 16th century. They were either educated from the University of Oxford or Cambridge. So we have prominently six university wits and their names are from the Cambridge University. We have the name Christopher Marlowe, Thomas Nash and Robert Greene. Christopher Marlowe, Thomas Nash and Robert Greene. And from the University of Oxford, we have the people like John Lilly, Thomas Lodge and George Peel. John Lilly, Thomas Lodge and George Peel. Now, is there any way to cram these names or so that we could easily remember these names? One way I try that is by rhyming or by quickly reciting their names. Like from the Cambridge we have Marlowe Nash Green. Marlowe Nash Green. And from the Oxford we have Lily Lodge Peel. Lily Lodge Peel. So that is how I remember. And okay one more name we have that is Thomas Kidd. Have you ever heard this name Thomas Kidd? There is a famous work in English literature that is called a Spanish tragedy. Spanish tragedy. And this work is written by Thomas Kidd. And among the university wits, sometimes this name is included as a university wit and sometimes it is not included. So it is debatable. But otherwise, we have six clear names as university wits. Wits means the writer 
from the word wit we have witty means where we have something as a smart comment so now from cambridge marlowe nash green and from oxford lily lodge peel now we come back to his personal life again that he studied from the christie college of cambridge university and during the college time secretly he served the english government for the queen elizabeth he was serving maybe as a spy and later in the year 1593 we have a warrant against him issued by the authority that he committed blasphemy now what is this term blasphemy blasphemy is something when someone is committing something against the religion especially to disrespect the god blasphemy means when you commit something against the religion especially when you say something against the god the almighty god of any particular religion then you are charged with blasphemy maybe your act maybe your words whatever it can be and in those times if you were charged with blasphemy there was hardly any pardon so he was arrested and factually it is said that on the 18th of may 1593 a warrant was issued against him charged of the blasphemy and heresy heresy is also similar sort of thing related to blasphemy and on 20th of the may two days later he made his appearances and on 30th of the may 10 days later he was killed he was stabbed who did this why did this it is still not clear there are plenty of stories related to his death but nothing clear on the record and on his tomb an epitaph is written what is epitaph the words that are written on the tombstone of a dead person that is called as epitaph and that is written as dr faustus and now we have some literary facts uh, related to his works the first that he mostly wrote in the blank verse and unrhymed pentameter he applied the next that only two of his works were published during his lifetime and the rest were published after his death and we have william shakespeare he paid him tribute in the work as you like it there is a play by william shakespeare and in that he quotes a line from the work hero and leander hero and leander that was a poem published in the year 1598 written by christopher marlowe just remember that there is a poem hero and leander who wrote this christopher marlowe published in the year after his death in the year 1598 and william shakespeare wrote a play as you like it and in that work he uses the lines from hero and leander we shall discuss this poem in this segment pretty soon the next we have ben johnson the famous playwright of the same age he wrote that marlowe wrote in lines simple line marlowe wrote in lines as he used blank verse the next as i already told you that he was among the six university wits one more interesting point that who coined this term university wits we have a critic from the 19th century in the year 1845 he was born the name is george saintsbury george saintsbury an english critic and he coined this term and when he was studying the literature of the elizabethan age then he divided these writers in two categories the first category was of the educated writers and they were termed as the university wits and even among them there we have the further uh, division of the two different universities they belong to so remember university wits the term coined in the 18th sorry in the 19th century now after the university wits we have nothing more to talk about his life only one thing you can get as an idea that all the university wits they wrote almost the period before william shakespeare started writing and when the university wits wrote after that we have another category of the writers like uh, 
William Shakespeare and Ben Johnson and all other, they are not as educated as the university wits were. Okay then, before ending this lesson, I think we should discuss one more, one work actually. The first work of his that is Dido Queen of Carthage. That is a short work. So this is his first work and uh, the long title it contains as the tragedy of Dido Queen of Carthage and it is written in collaboration with Thomas Nash. So two writers for this work we have Christopher Marlowe and Thomas Nash and it is based on the work of Virgil. Now try to recall who is Virgil. Number of times I have mentioned this name. Virgil is a famous Roman writer in the period of 1st century BC. Around that period he was there and he wrote a work Aeneid. The Aeneid. And in that we have book 1, 2, 4. On the base, basis of that book we have this work Dido Queen of Carthage. And one more thing you can easily remember that there are some myths as I already mentioned number of times that there are religious myths related to the gods to the heaven or to some religious stories and on the basis of these myths we have some of the plots in the works of the famous writers so in Dido Queen of Carthage we have the myth of that uh, the Queen Dido and her love interest Aeneas. This play was performed in the year 1594 by Children of the Chapel. Children of the Chapel. It is a company of the actors. Now, what is the plot? In this play, we have the Queen Dido. She is the Queen of Carthage and she is some sort of a crazy queen. She fell in love with uh, the warrior Aeneas. He is from Rome. And she was always begging him now to accept her love. But he was always rejecting her. Then what she does that she steals his oar so that he cannot cross the river and go by the boat. So oar is something that we use when we use the boat to cross the river. Anyway, so she steals that and then Aeneas is still rejecting her. He never accepts her proposal and then she feels dejected and then she cursed him and she commits a suicide. She throws herself into the fire. Now we have a number of characters who are associated with story that the first is king. The name is Larbas. Larbas and he is so much interested or in love with Dido. But Dido was loving Aeneas. So when he saw that uh, Dido has committed a suicide, she has thrown herself into the fire. At the same moment, Larbas, he too kills himself. And then we have one more character that is Anna. She is the sister of Dido. And she is in love with Larbas. And when she saw that Larba committed a suicide, then she herself also commit the same and she dies. So all these characters dies in the end. So that is how we see the end of this story Dido Queen of Carthage. And in this work we have one more theme that is of homosexual relationship between Jove and Ganymede. Jove and Ganymede. These two names are also from the myths of Greek civilization or from the Greek gods and goddesses, Jove and Ganymede. In the number of works, we shall see such names. Okay, anyway, so that is the work Dido, Queen of Carthage. So in this lesson, what we have discussed earlier, we uh, talked about lots of things related to the life of Christopher Marlowe and then we discussed the concept of university wits and the six main university wits. The uh, names are Marlowe, Nash and Green and Lily, Lodge and Peel. So six university wits. And then we discussed the first work of Christopher Marlowe that is Dido, Queen of Carthage. Remember this is not his original work because this is written taking source from the Aeneas. 
the work Aeneid, sorry, written by Virgil. There was a question as well regarding this that what is the first original work written by Christopher Marlowe? So we had a number of options like Dr. Foster's Tamburlaine, Jew of Malta, and Dido Queen of Carthage. So the right answer is Tamburlaine. Dido Queen of Carthage, okay, it was the first work, but it is not the original work. It is based on the story of Aeneid. So that's it for this lesson. In the next work or in the next lesson, sorry, we shall discuss his famous work that is Tambourine. So thanks a lot for watching this lesson and have a great day.